The biggest thing is I just love the stage. I feel like being on stage in front of hundreds of people, there's like no better feeling in the world. But I feel like I just found my dream job. But I am a pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. My name is Kose Jilks. I'm 23 and I'm an opera singer. Living across the world and five centuries since its origin, Kose Jilks is one of Perth's young singers with their heart set on the opera stage. The energy of the stage is sort of infectious. It's just fun. And I get to show another world to other people and I get to live in another world, which I think is really special. such a real connection to human emotions. Once I saw that first piece of opera that I saw, and I was moved so deeply um, in a way that I haven't been moved by any other art form, that was the hook. And after the first singing lesson that I had, I was a little bit weary, but very, very soon I just took, took to it, took to it like a duck to water. <laughs> like next level opera is always about death love partying it's such a heightened form of theater and I think the actual um, singing style of opera heightens it even more <laughs> For Sophie Herbert, the journey to the main stage started with a backstage encounter. When I was 10 years old, I went to see La Traviata and I got like a backstage pass to meet the cast. The lead soprano was like, oh my gosh, you know, you could be an opera singer one day. And I thought, oh, no way, like, that's way too hard, could never do that. And yeah, then look at me now, I guess. <laughs> You sing this high note and it's like in the right placement, it's feeling good technically. You kind of sing it and it just doesn't even feel like it's coming from you. It's kind of this like, whoa, did I make that sound? We have the stage and we have just our natural voice with no amplification. And I feel like there's no other way to recreate what we present, you know, as, an, as opera singers. The voice is like one of the most powerful instruments because it is the person. The person is the instrument. It's just like crazy. For aspiring stars, a gifted voice is only the first step to reaching operatic heights. There's a lot that goes into it. It's very tough, um, but it's also very rewarding as well. If you're not looking at music, you'll be studying languages. I've sung in like Italian, French, German, English, Russian, and I'm Japanese, so I sing in Japanese sometimes. I've sung in six languages, yeah. But I only understand two. <laughs> Even if you're born with natural talent, you still gotta, you know, hone your craft and kind of add to that, add technique. You can't just be absolutely flawless once you pop out the womb, you know? <laughs> Behind the curtains of the opera stage, young singers need a guiding voice. I'm 74 years of age. Um, I've been an opera singer for over a career of over 50 years, and I've been teaching singing for a lot of the last part of my life. It's a hard thing. We work in a place like this. We might have 20 new scholars a year or something like that. Maybe only one or two at the most might become really well known for being a, a solo principal opera singer. It's just incumbent on so many imponderables, luck, uh, health, uh, family background, so many things. You might do than make your boy a pilot. Opera Australia boasts the title of the number one arts employer in Australia but 19 to 25 year olds represent only 10.9% of all their employees. 
With the odds already against them, Perth's aspiring stars face another challenge as they pursue opera in one of the world's most isolated cities. They have to leave Perth if they want to do anything major. A lot of people end up moving over to Europe because um, that's where opera, you know, lives and breeds. <laughs> Pursuing opera in an isolated place comes with its silver linings. The thing with Perth, it's remote, so um, especially during lockdown, the industry really started using local talent. And so as an opera singer just starting out, it's really great because, um, you know, you've got all these opportunities and that focus on young artists. In Perth, it's actually been quite good where I'm at. If I, maybe if I was a little bit further along in my career, I wouldn't have the same opinion. But as a young singer in Perth, I find the opportunities are really, they're there. You're kind of like a big fish in a small pond. Because West Australia is so isolated, West Australians are very good at making their own entertainment happen. Among those making their own entertainment happen is Hattie Marshall. Freeze Frame Opera, I um, started this company in Perth in 2016 and the aim of the company is to um, give uh, role singing opportunities to outstanding local professional artists and to sort of present opera in a shortened, modernised form that would appeal to the masses. UWO and Wapper, Wapper churn out so many amazing graduates, but then there's not a lot of em employment opportunities once they, once they do graduate. The opera journey ahead of these young singers may be tough, but for them, it's all worth the moment in the spotlight. When you're standing in that wing and it's your first entrance for the night, you feel your blood rushing through you. If I could say it in one word, it's glorious. It's just glory at its best. There's something so raw and powerful about it. It's just, it moves you in a way that I feel like nothing else can. So much adrenaline just streams straight through you. It's exhilarating, you know? And then as soon as you step out, you look out into that audience and you just think, I have to give these people what they came here to see. Yeah, yeah. It's worth coming to watch. <laughs>